Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to talk about how you can run a batch file or a script file in Windows in your C Sharp Visual Studio application. Now, previously we talked about how you can run a command from your C Sharp application. And the command we're talking about is, for example, if you go into your command prompt in Windows, you can type a command and execute it. And we showed how to take that same command and execute it in your C-sharp application. And as an example, we used a command that would automatically shut down and restart your computer into the system BIOS or the startup. So you don't have to worry if you want to go into BIOS, you don't have to worry about doing a restart and then hitting the right key at the right time to get in. This would automatically do it for you. So really nice to be able to run these commands. The question is, why would we need to run a batch file or a script file? What's the benefit of doing that? Well, there's a lot of benefits of having multiple commands. And basically a batch file is a list, a text file with a list of commands that you can step through and execute each line, each command, one after the other, and it will do all of that for you. Why would you need it? Well, here's one example where you might want to get some information about your CPU on your local computer or even the CPUs on the computers on your network. And there is a command called WMIC CPU list full, which gives the properties of your CPU. And you may recognize this WMIC. You may be familiar with WMI or CIM or WMIC. It's basically Windows Management Instrumentation and different versions of that that allow you to access lower level properties of your computer and the hardware. So for example, I can enter this command and it will go to the CPU and it will give you all of this information. It's an AMD 64, the family model, stepping, current clock speed, and it's got a bunch of information about the name of the processor, the processor ID type, and so on. So what you can do is you can run this command, then run another command about another computer on the network, or getting more data from the computer on a different component. And you can have a whole list of commands and put them in a batch file that will go through and step through and execute each one and return information that you can use or not use. Uh, it can also turn on services. It can do a whole bunch of stuff. But uh, batch file and script files are a really nice way to get information and to configure different components on your system. So what are some other examples of why you might need this? Here is another example of why you might want to have a batch file or script file using uh, the regular commands or the PowerShell commands to help you on your computers on your network. In this case, we've talked about this before, where for decades, Windows has had some issues with networking and visibility of computers on the network. And we talked about that before and how to resolve those. And one of the ways you can resolve it is by using these PowerShell or command line commands. And here is a great example, even Windows 11. This is a computer with brand new Windows 11 on it. And I've got File Explorer open here on the top, and it's showing all of the computers on my network. The problem is all of the remote computers are showing up, but this Windows 11 computer that I'm running this on isn't showing up. It should say HP Laptop, but it's not there. And we showed in the other video how you can write a C Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms application to fix this. And it turns out there's a couple services that need to be running in the background that even though you've got your file and printer sharing set up and your network discovery set up and enabled, sometimes for some reason those services don't run. And that causes the computer not to show up. So one of those services is called FD Resource Publication. And here we've got a PowerShell command that will tell us the status of that service that needs to be running in order for this computer to show up. So I'm going to hit enter and it says function discovery resource publication. The status is that service is stopped, which explains why this computer isn't showing up. So what I can do is I can run another command and say start that same service. And when we do that, the HP laptop icon should show up here and now it's visible on the network. So I'm going to hit enter 
And as it runs, you can see the HP laptop shows up. So this is a great example of how for networking issues, you can have a script or a batch file that does a bunch of things, check status of hardware, of devices on the network, and configures them. You can even run this as a startup script to make sure that this computer is visible on the network without having, not having to worry about going out and checking to see what's going on. So now, how do you create a batch file in the first place? Well, it's really simple. It's basically just a text file where each line has a command. And what I like to do is use Notepad++. You can use the regular Notepad Windows. Uh, Notepad++ recognizes the different commands and structures. But I basically start a new Notepad++ document. And what I like to do is go into Language. And under B, there is a batch that you can select. And that will recognize it as a batch file and give you all the appropriate formatting. So, as I said, basically each line is just a command. So I can copy and paste what we talked about before where we're looking at the function discovery values to make the computer show up on the network. And we've got the get-service with the name fdrespub, which is the name of the service, and it's returning the status. And then we are doing a start service for the same thing. Now, one thing you have to be careful of, you notice here the, the quote marks here are straight. And here, when I copied and pasted, the quote marks are at an angle. Um, you may get an error if, the, if it doesn't recognize those. So I like to delete those and retype them in. I'm not sure what the formatting is that gives you that. But you need to uh, make sure that everything is formatted correctly. But otherwise, this is basically a batch file. And if you run it, it will do this, and then it will do this. So what I can do is I can do File, Save As, and go to my C drive, and you can have a .bat extension and say, Turn on FD Function Discovery, and then you can save that, and you've got your batch file. So now let's take a look at, once you've got your batch file, how are you going to run it in your C-sharp application? So now when we talk about batch or script files, we've got to keep in mind there are two different sort of languages in Windows for doing command line. And up here in black is the what I call the older DOS commands, which is actually Windows commands. And they are different from a subset of the Windows commands, which is called PowerShell. And those are newer, but they're different kind of languages. They're different formats and they do different things. So we got to keep in mind there are two different types of batch files you might encounter. One is the regular, what I call the DOS command, and one is the PowerShell commands. And we'll look at both of those, how we can implement those. Now, it's really important that you look into exactly what's available with the Windows commands. And to do that, I encourage you to go to learn.microsoft.com and search for Windows commands. It's under Windows Server. And it tells you all of the commands that are available. It talks about PowerShell and the command shell. And it gives you a list of all of the commands that are available. And if we scroll down here, down to the P, you can see one of the commands is PowerShell. So it allows you in the regular command, the DOS command interface, to run PowerShell commands. And then if we look down further, you can see that there is WMIC, which we've talked about before, which is Windows Management Instrumentation Command Line, and it allows you to do some hardware-associated stuff. And we're going to talk about those things uh, in this video. You should scroll through this and see all of the things that are available in um, window for Windows commands. So again, there's what I call DOS commands, and then there's PowerShell commands. And what we're going to talk about is, first of all, how do you run a batch file containing DOS commands in the command prompt? And then we're going to talk about how do you run the same batch file in C Sharp. And we talked previously about using system diagnostics, the process.start. And it turns out you can use the very same methodology to run a batch file as you do to run a single command. So we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about PowerShell commands, how to do similar things. We're going to start out running a single PowerShell command in the regular command prompt, not in the PowerShell window, but in the regular DOS command prompt. 
Then we're going to run a batch file containing PowerShell commands from the regular DOS command prompt. And then we're going to show you how to run the same batch file with PowerShell commands in it using C Sharp. And again, thankfully, you can use the same system.diagnosticsprocess.start and just feed it some different values and it will run a PowerShell batch file containing PowerShell commands. So to start out, if I want to run a batch file containing DOS commands, for example, WMIC commands from the command prompt, and I've got a batch file that has a couple of WMIC commands where I just want to get some data about the CPU. So I do a WMIC CPU get load percentage, and then after that another command CPU get current voltage. And I've only got two commands in that batch file, but I want to run that and get the values. To do that, all I have to do is go to the command prompt and type start, and then have the path to the batch file and it will run. So keep in mind to run a batch file in DOS, in the DOS prompt, you use the start command and then tell it the location of the batch file. And this will open a new command prompt window and show the execution of the commands. So let's take a look at how we can do that. So I'm going to say start d colon backslash batch file dot bat and hit enter. And you can see it starts up another window and it gives me the results of both of those. So it, it went and ran WMIC CPU get load percentage and came back with load percentage is 9%. And then it ran WMIC get current voltage, current voltage is 12, whatever that means. So you can see we were successful in running our batch file, which basically looks just like this, basically a text file we talked about before, and it ran that and gave us the information. So running a batch file from the command line is really pretty straightforward. Just use the start command. Now, to run the same DOS batch file in C Sharp using the process.start, again, system diagnostics, we use the file name, which is the program you want to run, and we're going to say command, and then we're going to have an argument just like we had before, but we're going to specify a batch file path as a string, and we're going to use the ampersand, in our case, d colon backslash get CPU info dot bat or batch file dot bat or whatever. And then we're going to put that into this argument. And this is one of the challenges that you have to get the right formatting of this argument. So in parentheses, we're going to have this forward slash C, which says run whatever is in this string and then terminate. And then we've got this backslash two quote marks then we're adding the batch file path that we defined here. And then we have a backslash and then two more quote marks. So this argument is kind of confusing. So let's take a little closer look to see what's going on here. Uh, we have the batch file path. We have the slash C. But then we've got some what are called escape characters. And the point of this is to tell the argument to insert a double quote before and after the batch file path. Because if you didn't have this escape character, it would get really confused. It would, okay, you're starting the slash C, where does it end? If there's no indication that this is a special character, this double quote, it would see a starting double quote and then two ending double quotes and it wouldn't know what to do with it. So we have to escape this double quote that basically says, okay, insert this double quote before this and insert another one after that. And when that's done, you get something that looks like this. You get a double quote at the beginning, double quote at the end, and then you get a slash C as part of the argument, and then batch file dot bat in double quotes. So now let's see how you go about running PowerShell commands in your regular DOS command prompt window. So we've got a command that we looked at before called get service, and it gives you a list of all the services running on your computer. To run that as a PowerShell command, which it is, you would type P-O-W-E-R-S-H-E-L-L, -L, get dash service, hit enter, 
and you can see it gives you a list of all the services and their status. Are they running? Are they stopped? And so on. So running a PowerShell command in your DOS prompt is very easy to do. So now let's say I've got the same PowerShell command in a batch file. It's just one line. It says PowerShell get service. So if I want to run this batch file, maybe I've got 25 lines of PowerShell commands. How do I do it? Well, you do it the same way we did it with the regular command prompts. We do a start d colon backslash PowerShell gripped dot bat. And that should go through and run the same command, but out of our batch file. So we'll hit it. And it, you can see it opens up another window and it gives you exactly the same thing. So again, you can use that same command with either regular DOS commands or PowerShell commands, which is really nice because then we can do the same methodology in our C Sharp application to run batch files or scripts from either regular DOS commands or PowerShell. So why would you want to do that? Well, I run in .NET Framework because it's got some features that I like and they are deprecated or moved into open source in the newer versions of .NET. So I'm not a big fan of the .NET. And unfortunately, PowerShell is not available in the .NET Framework, only some very, very old versions of PowerShell. However, you can run them in this regular DOS command in your C Sharp application just fine. So that's a, one reason why you might want to do it. So let's look at how we can do a PowerShell script in our C Sharp application. Uh, and it turns out it's very similar to what we had in the regular DOS commands. So as you can imagine, it's almost identical to what we had with the regular DOS batch file. Uh, you use a file name as the command, and that's the application you want to run, which is the command. And we saw that the Windows commands include a PowerShell command, and that is located inside the batch file. So basically all you do is you have exactly the same file names, arguments, uh, make sure you've got the right batch file path. We changed it to a different name, PowerShell script, instead of batch file. But it's exactly the same. And we just got to make sure that we have the PowerShell command in that, in that batch file and it will run the get service or what other PowerShell command you have. So in the next video, we're going to apply those techniques we just learned about and develop a very simple C Sharp application that does what you see here. We basically hit a button that says get info and it goes out and does a PowerShell get service and put that in a scrolling text box that has all of the services running, what's their status, and also show you some ways once you get this data, if you ran a command, a PowerShell command, or a DOS command, and it's giving you some data, how do you grab that data and parse it and make it usable, and how do you search for, you know, if you want to look for a specific service here, like your um, function discovery resource publication we talked about before, which is something you may want to deal with if you can't see your computer on the network, that kind of thing. So we'll show you how to do that in the next videos in the series. So if you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications, but most of all, Please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.